Captain Logan. And I'm Eric. It's time for the Daredevil Season 3 spoiler cast. As you can tell, we are not live. We're not doing this with a panel. Uh, we don't do that as often as we used to do uh, uh, when we don't really have a chance to get people together. Or And with this, I just don't think a lot of folks that might have been on have even finished it yet. Mm. Um, I don't know if Dan's even started. I haven't talked to him. Mm -hmm. uh, we go ahead and just do this on the omnibus. So uh, <coughs> we're gonna, uh, we're gonna obviously, you know, spoil things and talk about everything that we uh, can get through through in uh, about half an hour, 45 minutes on this one, because uh, we got a long show this week and we're doing a whole bunch of things. But uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it, Eric. Uh, so a lot of people are saying that the season is as good as season one, really, really excited people about it. People are acting like it's the best superhero thing ever. Yeah, and I mean, as a whole, as a show, it still is. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Well, I mean... I mean, yeah, season actually. two is not the best thing ever, yeah. but I think it's better than a lot of people do. do. Um, I just think people kind of have overcompensated both directions. Like, see, season two is awful. No, I don't agree with that. Uh, season three is the best thing ever. Yeah, I'm not agreeing with that either. No, I still think season one's their best season. Um, I still think season one is the best live-action superhero thing that's been made. No, I absolutely agree with that. Uh... But I don't think season three is, th th pardon me, I don't think season three is straggling that far behind. I think overall it's excellent. I agree. I agree. I am a little bit unsure of the ending. I'm, I'm wigging out a little bit about how we chose to end that. Okay. Uh, I cannot decide how I feel about it, and I'd like to talk it through with you. Okay. Because I, I, just, I just cannot decide. I'm conflicted about it. Okay. Um, can, can, can I throw something in before we get to the ending? We don't have to start at the end. Okay. Okay. So, but that's my biggest reservation. Um, the the thing I let me say this real quick. Um, the thing I love the most about it is it is a direct sequel to season one, and it it handles season one stuff and adds to that wonderfully well. And I think part of the reason I was enjoying it so much is because I just got done writing about that, mm. and I didn't feel like I was missing anything, even not going back to season two because it kind of it doesn't ignore season two that stuff happened it, it uses what it needs to from it but i mean it's just a direct sequel to season 1 i think the way it handles um the uh the the aftermath of like people finally finding out about karen killing wesley and all of that is really <clears throat> solid and i love her flashback episode yeah i think it's really really good i agree um so i want to start with what's not exactly a criticism okay but maybe false marketing. This is Bullseye. not born again. Oh, sure. It's not. It's not born again. In no way is like. Yeah. Like, this is like. I should have known you'd want to lead with that. Yeah. This course. is like, 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 like we looked at a bunch of different. This, this is like an. Ad, this is just a adaptation of comics, right? We're like, we we pulled some things from Born Again. We pulled some things from this. We pulled some. Things. This is not born again, but it also doesn't preclude born again from happening. Like this, like when I got to the end of this, when someone said with Kingpin, I was like, "Oh, we're putting the pieces there. We will, we could still do that later." Don't tell me you're doing a story and you're not doing it. Like this yeah. isn't even kind of that story. Other than, like I know that there's there there are a couple of things where like there's lines directly from Born Again, um, and Matt is in the uh, the uh, the convent. The convent. And Matt is in the convent, but like. This is not in any way, shape, or form that story. Don't tell me you're going to tell me that story. Um, I mean, it's got elements of it. Yeah, kind of. I don't know. But it's not any more born again than first season is exactly any particular arc. I mean, it's it's taking from some things that tells a different story. Yeah. But I like that about it because it's unpredictable. I don't know where it's going to go. It's not a criticism of this season. It's a criticism of telling me that that's what they of the were way doing. they're marketing it. Yeah. It's not well because I expected that. it to be. Okay. I wasn't. But are you complaining about the marketing? Or are you complaining about the last scene of Defenders? No, I'm complaining about what they said. I'm talking about the producers. Okay. Stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure. It's not. It's just it's not Born Again. It's it's also not like well we adapted Born Again. It's just not that story. Yeah, it's not. Just don't tell me you're going to make that story. And like that's not. That's not even a black mark on this season. It's a, it, it's really good. It is not what they said it was. So I just want to put that up at the front. Uh, that was, I didn't want to say disappointing. Because very quickly I was Do like, oh, this is Born not again. surprised I am? I, I never thought it was Born Again. I never thought they were going to straight up adapt that story. Yeah. And it is not, it, it, this seems to just be a company line. And I don't mean for Marvel, I mean companies in general. Mm. 
um, constantly telling us things are being adapted that aren't exactly really what they're saying. Yeah, Winter Soldier is also not really Winter Soldier. No, it's not. I mean, this happens all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, you just watch, and maybe maybe I'm wrong about this, and I hope I am, um, but maybe it doesn't matter if it ends up being a good movie, but you just watch. We're going to walk out of Dark Phoenix, and we're going to be like, he said it was a straight-up bad... It's not! Like, you know that's going to happen. Yeah. Um, I just, I take everything with a grain of salt when, when, uh, when producers and directors are talking about things, and I just hope it's good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's also not out, which I thought it was going to be. I was, I was like, maybe it's like born again and out at the same time. It's not out. So did I. Yeah. Um, but again, it's got elements of that. It, it does. It does. And it also does have elements of Guardian Devil. Um, and it, in an interesting way, kind of has Karen uh, tell Kingpin that uh, that he's Daredevil without actually telling him. Mm -hmm. I liked that scene. I thought that was cool. But all it does is confirm a suspicion he already has. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um... But talk about the season itself. And we do the Karen drug thing without throwing her under the bus. And But, again, we'll talk about that because I'm... Okay, so I'll just... We don't have to go to the ending, but I'll, I, I need to say this because it's my big thing. Mm -hmm. I can't decide if, if it's too safe or not. The ending itself. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't know how I feel about it. It's very pat. It doesn't feel like... Yeah, th that's a better word. Yeah. Um... I didn't think we were we were moving toward such a happy ending. Yeah. Okay. And I'm so, not saying that's a bad thing. I can't decide how I feel about it. I want to talk it out. Here's with you. here's kind of here's here's my my biggest. Because it blindsided me with that. I thought Karen was gonna die the whole season. Did you have that? No. Oh, did you not? I didn't like not think she was gonna die, but like I wasn't like waiting for it. Boy, I felt like there were three fake outs in that church. Okay. Well, and obviously that's where she dies in Guardian Devil. Exactly. Yeah. And I and, and like it could have been that that thing like from Ultimate Spider Man where it was like trying to that we talked about earlier mm. was trying to make you think it was going to do a thing but it wasn't actually going to go there. Mm. I thought there were fake outs where it was like we're not going to do it now, but she's still in danger. Maybe it'll happen in a minute. You know. Um, I think. Pro it's weird to talk about this. I don't want to say the pacing is a problem. It's interesting. It's interesting. It's not an issue while I'm watching it. I get to I get to episode seven. I'm like, that's the beginning of episode three. But I didn't feel that way getting to episode mm -hmm. seven. I wasn't waiting. I wasn't. It feels like it, it's it, it's wasting time. And season one is really deliberately paced, but I don't have the same experience with it. It's different. My problem is, I feel like we spend a lot of time with Kingpin setting pieces in place, but I don't actually buy where we have him at the end of the season. And then, when Matt beats him, mm -hmm. it feels like... And now we're done with that. I felt like it should have been a bittersweet ending. Kingpin's still around. The fact that he so completely beats him again... Yeah, that's how I felt about it. It felt... And I, I feel like I would have liked it more if Kingpin was... But it's a really powerful scene. Like, everything in the moment is working. Yep. I, I feel like it would... I don't know if I... I don't know... Here's the best way to put it for me. I don't know if I like some of the story decisions, but the execution was always right. Well, there are some things. It's all in like the last two or three episodes. Yeah. There are some. There are certain things where, uh, when Wilson Fisk goes out and does his speech, which again, like if we're getting the ending that we're getting, I think that speech should happen earlier. He should be a public figure earlier. The fact that Foggy's like moving to like take him down is kind of weird. I feel like Wilson Fisk needs to be a much more public figure earlier in the season. Uh, for the way we end it. Not as while I'm watching it, but for when we get to the ending. I don't know if I agree with that. Okay. Um, but his speech wasn't bad, but it felt comic book. Interesting. In a way that the rest of this show didn't, because it's a very grounded, realistic show. That felt like a speech that was not bad, but almost like... It almost felt like it was speech lifted directly from a comic and put into the show, where I was like... I don't, like, and I thought the scene was shot weirdly where, like, he gets out and there's all these people with signs being, yeah. like, like, down with oh, Wilson Fisk. And, and then suddenly they put them down? Yeah, where he's just like, you don't understand. They said, what they said about me was a lie. And they're like, oh. He had, like, sp I forget what exactly it was. And by the way, Eric watched this more recently than me. Mm -hmm. I got through it real fast because I was really into it. Mm -hmm. And then I finished it too quick for when we were going to record it. And I, if I'd had time, I would have watched it a second time. I didn't. That scene but, felt like... But I thought he had like some like really kind of almost specific evidence or something. I didn't feel like that. I thought okay. his speech was very just like, no, you don't understand. What they said about me wasn't true. And people were like, 
oh, what they said about you wasn't true. And it's fine in the comic book where it's just, you're looking at, like, panel, 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 like, his speech. And, like, that, it, it wasn't bad. It just felt wrong for the material. And then from that point forward, I kept it having things like, like that board. where I'm like, you're in a different reality now than you were before. You're in a more heightened reality than you were for the previous ten episodes. That was that was an ex that was the experience I had, which felt right in line with season one. It felt right in line with season one, and then it felt way more comic booky, which isn't a problem. And some exactly. people can, and some people said that about the last episode of season one mm -hmm. that they thought that it suddenly in the last like twenty minutes kind of turned into a comic book. Yeah, it was just it was it was it was very I had a very weird experience. I did not dislike it, uh, but I had all of these like weird reservations where I'm like. I feel like this should have happened earlier. I didn't feel like it should have happened earlier while I was watching. While you were watching. When I got to it, I was like, well, this should have happened earlier. And then when I get to the end, I was like, yeah, all that stuff should have happened earlier because I needed more time with this stuff before we got to such a decisive ending. What I like about it is... Especially because he beats him so completely in season one. I felt like he should still be out there, right? Like, we shouldn't just finish it. No, it kind of felt like we're just going to move on to the next thing now. And and, and it, it, like I was a little bit concerned that that might happen, too, because I felt like Fish got almost too much screen time. And like I love him, and he's my favorite character in the show, but it kept feeling like we got to get him in every inch of the show as we can because we might not use him later, which made me wonder if they might kill him. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know how exactly that would happen because they weren't going to have Daredevil do it. There was no way that was ever the eventuality, right? And no, like but Daredevil's going to kill, kill him kill somehow. Or... Yeah, that's true. And they, they do set up... I also could have seen Vanessa killing him. Yeah, when we weren't really sure why she wasn't sleeping with him and all of that mm. bef before we knew what she was talking mm. about. Um, she kind of felt like she came in a little bit too late. No, um, I agree, but I think she's wonderful when she's there. She is, yeah, and like... People that love this are going to complain because it's going to sound like we're just throwing out negatives. The thing is, it's difficult not to only talk about negatives about a thing that you loved but you feel weird about a, a part of, right? Mm -hmm. where, where it's like, the the po a lot of the positives are so obvious it's hard to naturally just talk about them. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, at, while I'm there, I do want to mention my, my reservation with Vanessa. I still have the same thing I did with Season 1. One of my few complaints about Season 1, which is, I still don't totally know, I, I don't know enough about this woman mm -hmm. to buy that she's that she becomes as ruthless as she does. Mm -hmm. And the actress plays it wonderfully, and I so and I do kind of buy it, but I feel like I need to know more about her. Um, it's it's a uh, like like that she got as far as she did to be okay with the things that Wilson was doing in the first season was was already hard enough for me to swallow. But here where she insists on being a part of it, I don't know where all that comes from. I really just don't know where it comes from. And there's also a scene with that that feels really comic booky to me and not it like just doesn't fit with the rest of the show. When Wilson sits down at the chair or whatever, which by the way, I love that he has all the TV screens, because that's what he has in the uh uh, the the trial of the Incredible Hulk movie. Oh yeah, he's, he's like a bunch of TV screens. That that I I, I don't that's think hilarious. that was a callback, but like that's what it maybe that set was cool. He was. So he sits down and he's like he's like this guy here, uh, you know he has all this information and this is what I'm gonna do to him, uh, because killing him will like 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 killing would raise these questions or whatever. So I'm I'm gonna do this to him. And she goes, yeah, but is he a threat? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, he is a threat. She's like, you should kill him. And he's like, yeah, I should kill him. That felt more heightened and like I don't know something about that scene along. There was a, it's was all it in the last was, three episodes. Is it that it was heightened, or is it just that he's such a master manipulator and is six steps ahead of everything? Why is that the thing that he didn't think to do? Well, I don't know if it's a heightened thing so much as she needed a thing that she does to be involved and to prove to him that she needs to be involved. Like, like I can see why you might call that a little bit contrived. I don't get heightened. I don't know. It, it just it's it's the it's the actual physical dialogue in the scene. Okay. It, it like it felt to me like but I was did, looking at a comic book. But page. did you question that a little bit? Where it was like, where it felt a little bit plot driven before character driven in that one moment where it's like we've because I had that where it's like well we've got to I'm glad you brought that up because I forgot about that where it's like uh, we've got to come up with something she does. And right after they've had this conversation, yeah. like it, it happens that she's worthy of being. That's there. a thing that happens too quick. But it was also weird because I felt like. He explained why he didn't kill him, and then she was like, "Well, did you think about killing him?" And he's like, "You're right." It felt weird. It felt really weird. I didn't have that with it. Okay, but anyway, um, but but other than that scene, I think she's great. Like, I, I really like her. 
Um, I like her in season one, but I really like her. I mean, I, I, you're right. Yeah, and she's turning more into comic book Vanessa, certainly. Like, 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 I, like, I like her. I like her argument and the reason that she's not fully with him. The whole like, well, you're, and that's very consistent with season one, where it's like, well, you, you know, you know, I feel. Uh, I feel disconnected from you. Like I'm here, but I'm not. Here. I'm not part of your world. I'm not part of your world. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I like that. Um, I, I agree. And I mean, I had this with season one too, where I'm like, but why? Um. You just like like I don't know what makes her go that way. Like she's an art curator. Like what in her life makes her that way? Yeah. And this is just a holdover of criticism from season one from me. I talked about this in the rewind. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of, I kind of hoped to get it this season. Mm -hmm. And she's still just, I guess, that enamored with him, with him and wants to be wrapped up in that world. I just, and she doesn't feel like a one dimensional character. I just, I feel walled off. Like mm -hmm. I just don't know enough. Mm -hmm. That's it with that. Uh, anyway, let's get to like some of the major beats and then. And then talk that ending out because sure. I just can't decide how I feel about it. So let's start with Bullseye because okay. uh, that was the big thing that was handled very, very differently from how I expected it to be. Um, you were hoping for like an actual Bullseye costume. I didn't. I thought he would be Bullseye. I certainly didn't expect it to be an origin story for Bullseye. Um, I think overall it's a good one. I mean, I, th I think it's handled really well. No, no, um, no. It, it's it's a it's a complete from the ground up reinvention of that character. It is, and I think it works. It he's, does. He's chilling. He's uh, as sympathetic as he can possibly be. Uh, I love the juxt. I kept comparing these two characters. I love the juxtaposition between him and the Deem. Mm -hmm. I kept thinking about that because you have this guy who doesn't have any empathy at all, and he's trying not to do bad things, but kind of can't help himself, and then you have this guy who has all the empathy in the world, but he's blackmailed and put in this impossible rock and hard place, place. but then by the end, with Nadim, um, I, I like, I still buy, I still buy it when the show is telling me, but like, he has, there should be consequences to his actions, he has, and he I, has he done sees a, that. he has done a bad thing, yeah, um, where like, he, there would have been bad personal consequences and his family might might have gotten hurt, but it wasn't worth the cost. And, it, like, I felt really bad for him. And this show, especially these two seasons, one and three, have been, has been so good. This is, this is, this is the, my big, big takeaway um, from the show and the reason I was so impressed with season one the first time I saw it. It's so good at doing, like, the really standard, obvious superhero TV stuff totally fresh. Yeah. You've seen that a thousand times, and I have never, in a, in a, especially a superhero thing, um, thought more about what I would do in that situation. Mm -hmm. I just kept the whole season going, if it was my kids, what would I, my family, what mm -hmm. would I do? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know that I wouldn't do exactly what he did. I just kept thinking that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, like, the way it handles, like, framing Daredevil and all that, like, just like with season one, where you've seen the should the superhero kill question not a million times, but it felt fresh and you're not complaining about it. It's exactly the same thing with the frame up in this season, mm -hmm. where I'm like, I've seen that a million times, mm -hmm. but I'm not like, ah, oh, Batman Returns again. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I'm and, really impressed with that. And and I and I, I, I love, jumping around. A uh, lot. I love the death of 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 uh, was it Nadine? Yeah, Nadine. Uh, I I loved his death in the the callback to the beginning of the Bullseye story where his 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 therapist is explaining to him like how to empathize. Right. When when, when Nadim is, is is like saying whatever, and he goes he goes. I, like, I understand. That sounds really... I know it's really, really hard. You kept bringing that. It sounds really hard. Yeah, I really like that. And he just doesn't understand. Yep. Um, so those two characters put next to each other were really interesting. What's kind of weird about Bullseye is that he's Bullseye. So... Okay. He's just an FBI agent... Yeah. ...who happens to be able to, like, do the Bullseye thing. I don't even necessarily know if he's, like, a field operative. He's not, like, a secret agent. He's... No, he was a sniper. Is he a sniper? I think we're told that. Okay, okay. I don't think he's just an FBI agent. Okay. He's with the FBI now. I think they had him on, like, covert missions and stuff. Okay. If, if I'm wrong, somebody somebody let me know, but I don't think he's just an FBI. I think, I, I think they talk about that. Okay. It seemed weird to me. I was like, so he's just an FBI agent, but... He has the bullseye thing, so he can he can he can be daredevil later. No, I always bought that. Okay, okay, that just felt like a thing that I didn't know if it fit. But if if we're told previously, but that's like, fine. 
the I mean, yeah, if he was only an FBI agent, that's kind of a problem, but unless you make him a sniper or something, how would he get that good at that? Like, what should his background be if well, you're going to give him one? Well, 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 that's the thing about making him an FBI agent, is like, well, he's an assassin. Like, he's just, that's what his job is. That's the only thing that you can do with the, with that set of skills. Yeah. Um, it just, it seemed weird to me. I'm like, so you're just, like, working a desk? Like, he doesn't work a desk, but you know what I mean? That felt, I'm like, I feel like he's bullseye because we need a bullseye, but, like, you had a you had a, you had a very different character in mind. That's um, true. You can't tell the story, and, and like like I get the point you're making that mm -hmm. well, then it's not bullseye. Yeah, I'm not complaining. Can't. It's not bullseye. I'm I saying I know, but let me finish. You, you can't tell the story they're telling if he's already an assassin. Obviously, no, obviously. And so, but that's why I say so. To your point, yeah, he's not bullseye. So maybe they, they should have just made him some other character or whatever. Like. Now, I get what you're saying with that, but I never didn't buy that he could do what he did. I also wonder if they didn't go if they didn't go straight up assassin because we just did that with Elektra. No, sure, and I'm not saying he should be an assassin. I'm just saying it felt to me we need him to have those abilities. Not not because he's bullseye, because we're going to put him in the, in the Daredevil suit. Well, but also because he's bullseye, because they yeah. want to have fun with that, and and they I do have fun with that. And I think it's necessary, like like to have to, to have fun with that um, it just seemed like with his background i was i was like but why can he do this yeah it, it it felt more plot driven than character driven i guess is really my my, my complaint with that but if you're right that that's more mixed in with his backstory then I it's not they, much problem. i, I might have just missed that yeah. i might have just missed it i also in maybe the problem part of the problem is they don't draw this to the fore maybe they should have done some stuff with the flashbacks or just talked about like like, uh, after he accidentally hurts a person by throwing something at them, he starts to, what, for whatever reason, build the skill of doing it on purpose. Where, mm -hmm. like, you know, he accidentally, he hits somebody with a thing, mm -hmm. with a ball, and then, and, and then they accidentally get killed. Mm -hmm. And then he starts using objects like that. There is some kind of correlation they're not bringing to the fore on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I felt like I was missing some kind of thematic character thing with the, with the bullseye. So thing. did I. Where I'm like... I also, think that, I also think the hat in the flashback was a little on the nose. I, I wasn't sure about I thought, that. I thought, I thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> um, I don't... I don't know about Wilson Fisk seeing it. I like... Well, you said when you watched it, you really liked that. Oh, yeah, because it... Cause it well... No, no, he's reading files. I'm talking about the hat itself. Oh, he, the hat is okay. Yeah, yeah. No, it was in the it was it was in the file. <laughs> he was wearing was, a hat with, with, with a black a, hat with a yeah, white a bullseye on it. <laughs> no, that that was the thing. Where I was like, I don't okay. think. Okay. I do. I do have an issue with with Matt seeing Kingpin in the white suit before he wears. The I white had suit. the same thing. Um, it's not a problem if he never wears a white suit, but it was weird foreshadowing. Mm -hmm. Where like Matt is seeing him talking to him in a white suit, and then he's gonna actually put one on later. Because mm -hmm. people had told me that he wears a white suit, and I thought maybe it was just the flashback. I mean, not the flashback. I thought it was just the, the hallucination, if it was a hallucination. I don't like that we keep doing hallucination either. I was fine with Kingpin early on, as, as like, this is like a physical, like, you visual see why story. I said I think it's a hallucination. It, yeah, at first it feels like a visual storytelling uh, 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 way of not. showing you it. what Matt's thinking about with the Kingpin. But it keeps going, he starts hallucinating his dad, and like, yeah, yeah, I don't need that. I will say, in the in the state of mind he was in at the beginning, I was sense. buying it okay. Where very often we do that when, with, like, to kind of create a storytelling thing, like, like a way to visualize somebody's thought process, but we make it too literal, so you're like, well, in real life... Very little makes a person hallucinate like that, and where it's really like connected to what's going on to you right now and that kind of thing. Uh, but like, it's just a device we use too much. I bought it more there because he was so distraught and he was so out of sorts and everything he'd been through and the ear condition. Yeah, yeah. Like, who knows what that would make yeah. you? You know. But also, if I recall, he never speaks to him. Whereas later, I feel like he starts talking to his I think so too. Yeah. Where, where, like, I, I like, I, like, like, like earlier because I messaged you. I was, I was like, I was like, they're using the thing, but it's clearly just a visual storytelling thing. And you're like, yeah, I don't know about that. And then I got to the scenes later. I was like, oh yeah, he's just hallucinating them. Yeah. Because I think he communicates with them later, and I don't know about that. I forget right off. I think he talks to his dad. I could be wrong. I'm more okay with if it's only them talking to 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 them. Like, if they don't interact with them. I love D'Onofrio's performance in those scenes because he's laying the voice on too thick. 
mm-hmm. like on purpose, mm-hmm. where he just does this really. You notice whenever he makes a, a speech for whatever reason, he he does he puts that tone on a lot harder. Mm-hmm. And when he's talking to Matt, he's not. The mannerisms are different. He's not acting exactly the same. It's it's almost like this like two dimensional cartoon version of the Kingpin. I really like that. He's regretting choosing that voice now, though, right? Oh yeah, he's just probably having to do that. He has to do, like suck in a lozenge all day long. Get, sucking down more mouthwash when he gets home, yeah. Um, I mean, maybe he can just do that, because, I mean, I guess that's not so dissimilar from his uh, <laughs> black voice, right? Um, it's his Edgar Sue voice. Yeah, 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 his Edgar Sue voice. Uh, it's not so dissimilar. It's like, maybe that's just a thing he can, he's good at. I don't know. Um, yeah. Sure. But, uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I really like Bullseye as a character. I think he's really interesting. Um, I really like the thing with the girl. Yeah, me too. Um, I love... They... They made me really confused about that for a minute. I'm sorry, we'll get there. We'll okay, get there. okay. Well, I I love when he... Uh, I I love when he's... like When he sits down with her and he's like... He's like super desperate. But he's like, I'm not obsessed with you in the way you think I am. And then she's like, well, that's just as creepy. Yeah, no, no, I really like that. Yeah, I great. do not know if I buy that she sits down with him. Like, I like his little speech where he's like, look, I'm, I'm talking to you in, in with people around so you feel safe, and like, I, I get I get it? No, I bought it. I don't it. know if I completely buy that she sits down with him. No, I bought it because it took him so long to get her to do it. Mm-hmm. And like, and, and that she didn't immediately sit down after the jogging thing. Like, he had to keep chasing her and stuff. Like, I... I like, I got the sense that she was just... I, I mean, remember, they met at a suicide helpline. Mm-hmm. Like, she's a really caring, empathetic person. Mm-hmm. If anybody was going to finally sit down with him after that long of not being sure and clearly thinking about getting a restraining order, it was going to be her. Mm-hmm. No, I bought that. Okay. Well, I, I, it's I, I, super sad that, she, that she's killed immediately after that. Yeah. So... Were you confused about that? The text message? Yeah. Yeah, well, I... I wasn't too later. Cause I no, bought, I was immediately. Oh, okay, because I, I bought that she... I was, I was like, I was like, okay, that makes sense. She, like, like she, she talked with him, but, like, she thinks he just needs help. And, like... But that's not what, how the text message read. That was really confusing at first, and it took... F- and it kind of comes out of nowhere. It took a, it does, it took a bunch of episodes before we, and, and they, they treat it as a reveal. It's ultimately really good and I like it. Like, like I, I like that it's that long before we know for sure, but I wasn't sure if they were going to tell us and that was going to bother me, and then they told us. Mm-hmm. And, oh, Kingpin had her killed, okay. Mm-hmm. But, um, no, I was so confused, I thought I, I, I missed something, and I rewound the footage. That's That's how lost I was, because the text message was like, I don't want to see you ever again. Leave me alone. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that doesn't follow the last conversation they had, because he had clearly wore her down. Like, like, and and like, because she's like, okay, I'll help you. Like the way that scene ends, I would, n- I would never have in a million years bought that that text message. See, my assumption was that I'd misread the previous scene, and that she was. That's why I went back and rewound it. Yeah. And then I watched. I did not. You didn't. You didn't misread that previous scene. Well, no, obviously. Because I went back and watched it twice. Yeah, no, I just assumed I was misreading that scene. I was like, I was like, okay, she she does care about him and she wants him to get help, but she doesn't want to be the person to help him. That's I was I was, I was like, okay, so I just misread that scene. She she just 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 that's just, what I thought, and then I looked at it and I was like, this this isn't making sense. But then that does. was that. But then that that was on purpose. Yeah. yeah. So there is. And we can talk more about Bullseye's character, but there is a, a big thing I do question and never got answers to. Is this um, contact eyes? What? The last shot of the ep- of, of the season is a close up on his eye. Oh yeah, I just know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, his weird contact. Right, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, well, yeah, they're gonna explain that right away. It's 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 a cliffhanger. Oh god, it's so cutesy. It's weird. Yeah, no, I'm with you. More I, so than the rest of the the, the, the the show, like all three seasons. Yeah. So first season. Uh, we hear Matt Murdock say, I'm not the bad guy, not once, but twice. Like, there is some stuff that we did, that we also did in the movie, that works fine in this show. The last thing with Bullseye on Earth I would have ever done would be to end it with the mid-credits from Daredevil. Did I can't believe we did that. Did you expect his them to say that what they were putting in the spine was vibranium? Because I was waiting for that. No, I never thought of that. Okay. Well, because he, he gets that Mantium spine in the comics after oh, the devil breaks his see, back. See, you just... I don't know much about this game. Sure, sure. But, but... And, here's the thing. I've read, I've read Bullseye in things. He pops up and stuff. I've never read 
anything that tells me anything about him. He just shows up and shoots things and leaves. Um. So 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 after Matt, uh, after 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 he kills Electra, Matt drops him off 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 a building or whatever. Yeah. And and they they, they give him that adamantium spine. Um. So I thought because they keep talking about like some kind of alloy that they're putting in his spine. I was I was like they're gonna say vibranium. I didn't even think of that. But these aren't actually connected to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We don't say anything. We're just like. It's really difficult. We're not sure if this will work. No, but we could. Like, yeah, they're not connected that much, but we do token things. Mm -hmm. Like, we bring up... What is that company from Iron Man 2 we bring up all the time? Iron Man... Oh, yeah. Um, 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 that's, uh, that we bring up all the time. Yeah, that's just a hammer. Yeah. yeah. Hammer. yeah. Well, no, we do hammer, but, but but we also... Rock song. We do rock song all the time. Yes. Like, yes. like no, there are there are things from those movies that they do, like, token mentions. Sure, on. sure. Um, so, no, it would not be crazy for Bri Vibranium to come up. Uh, and maybe it maybe it does later. I don't mm -hmm. know. Um, I'm not. And given everything vibranium can do, I completely buy it. It can fix the spine. Yeah, sure. Like, like I'm not saying it's bad necessarily. It's just anybody familiar with the movie has got to immediately be thinking, "You did the mid credits." Yeah, yeah. I just thought that was a really strange choice. That, that I was not expecting that. Yeah. Like, all right. Which the director's cut is not the mid credits. But, yeah, yeah. Um, and is the reason that I really. Not really hope they get a season four. It's the thing that leaves it not feeling like an ending. I know they weren't planning it to be an ending, but I'm more okay with with the ending of the season. And then, well, that's what I was a big thing I was going to ask you about, and, and um, I'll get to my other thing in a minute. Yeah, Let, let's let's go ahead and go there for a second. So I'm not with you on that. Like, it's a cliffhanger by definition, but it's not a thing I necessarily need to see paid off. Like, like if the if the series was going to end, it still feels like an okay ending, I guess. Oh, it, the fact that but, it's the last scene makes it feel like a weird note to end on if we don't get any more. If it was two scenes yeah, earlier, I guess. But we just do that kind of thing so often sure. with stuff. Like, if season two was the end, was the last thing we got, we'd be like, oh my god, no. You know what I mean? Like, th this feels like an okay ending for that show. But I more want to know what Kingpin does with the Daredevil knowledge. Like, it feels like we are setting up him getting outed, and I need to see that. I really mm -hmm. want to see that happen. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you don't know that, or or whatever, like, it's 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 an okay ending. You can just yeah. imagine maybe that happens down the road, yeah. whatever. Like, if, if that did, if we did have to end it here, I guess I am kind of glad that the trio's put back together. Mm -hmm. But I, I like that if we do a season four, it's not just going to be mad on his own again. Yeah. I like that. And then we might actually get to see some more lawyer stuff, which I remember this whole season thinking we weren't going to get any lawyer stuff. They lawyers up near the end. And I was like, oh, we are getting lawyers. No, that was cool. It did feel like... And uh, no one questioned where Matt Murdock had been. That ne that question never comes I, up. I also wondered about that. <laughs> but, um, but no, it's... I do feel like Matt kind of earns his happy ending, which is why I'm a little bit on the fence about that. And it's more just... I feel like Karen gets off too easy. Well, and it also... Is, it that, also... is that horrible to say? Like, she's been through a lot, and it's a redemptive season, and I get that. For some reason, I still kind of feel like maybe she gets off a little bit too easy. I think it's just expectations. And, and that's why I think what I'm saying could be unfair. So I'm just... I don't... This is why I'm conflicted, and I'm saying I don't... I expected Karen Page to be a really tragic character, and we have made her redemptive on the same level as Matt Murdock. There is nothing tragic left to do with her. Like, when we get to the end of the season, she is blank slate, kind of wiped clean now, right? Well, and I have questions about that, back, about that backstory. Oh, so, I, I think it's a great episode. It's um, a great episode. It's got that weird thing that episode one has, too, where, like, it's a flashback episode for 40 minutes, and that's 10 minutes of another episode. That was weird. Um, I don't mind that, though. It just anchors us back in the show. Okay. I bookend it. I don't know. I do think they should have bookended um, it. Because cause we find out, like, like the story's being told. No, they should have done it like the Luke Cage one. Yes, that's in exactly season what one, where we see him briefly, like, n like almost knocked out, and then we go back to the prison. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. They should have done that. My issue is, I don't, I don't know if I buy some of the things from her, given her backstory. Uh like what? Well, like, like we accidentally re -watch, re watched the beginning of, 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 uh, of season two. We did! We did. It took us 12 minutes before we realized it wasn't season three. Uh, neither of us have gone back to season two since, since, since there. It's been uh, a while. And then, and then finally I was like, wait a minute. This scene with these monsters reminds me a lot of season two. Oh, it is that show. All right. Um, so, so there's a scene at the beginning of season two where uh, they're, they're, uh, they, 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 Matt Murdock's dream life 
uh, as, as as we came to refer to it. Um, <laughs> Wait, they weren't together anymore. Is he having that Angel season four thing? <laughs> Where someone says something to Karen Page about, like... I knew you were going to tell everyone about that. You can handle yourself more, more more than I thought you could, or something like that. And she goes, more more than you realize. Yeah, I don't know about that, given her backstory. She sold some drugs, and she, she did shoot a guy. Yeah. But it's not like that was her life. I got the implication that no, she... But, but she's capable of that. And, and also... Um, she was also high out of her mind when she did that. Right, but you're talking about the conversation she has in season two, right? Yeah, I mean, some, some of it's the stuff in season one as well. Okay. She's talking about Wesley. Oh, is that is that what we're doing? Yeah. Okay. She's talking about Wesley. I assume that was more still... She can take care of... She shot Wesley, dude! Sure, sure. And her I, shooting I, a guy one time before is what gives her the gumption to do it there. I buy all of that. Okay. I feel like... And then, by this point... Now, this doesn't give us the season two thing, and I realize that, mm -hmm. but you also didn't see what she went through with, with Punisher. Okay. I, and she carries her gun in that. I don't remember if she shoots anybody, but like she's doing stuff with... And she she almost gets killed there, and there, there's a thing where Punisher's pretending to use her as a human shield, and it's a great scene. And like, You know, she's been through a lot of stuff. Okay. But not at the beginning of season one. I no. feel like we play her as she's been through a lot more stuff than what I finally see her having gone through. Which is the problem with flashing back. I don't agree with that. Time. Okay. I, don't, I think season one is only talking about the fact that she got her brother killed. Okay. And that's all it's talking about. Okay. Because there, there's the there's that thing, uh, there's that conversation with Yurek where he knows about her background. And you don't need anything more than that. No, but... And at that point, we're not talking about her, her being able to um, take care of herself. And also, remember, she looks real helpless at the beginning of season one. Yeah. Like, she almost gets killed in prison and stuff. I know, but like we're I know, not pretending like she's been going around shooting people. I, I, I don't mean that. I thought she was stronger. I mean, I thought her. I thought it would be. I didn't think it was one incident. I thought she lived a hard life, up to that point. I, I, I never, I never thought that. Okay. I mean, part we just of that, had different inter interpretations. Part of that's also that. also comic book stuff. I assume that she was in. She was like a junkie and like may like maybe maybe a porn star. Like I assume that there was something. I thought she had lived an extended period of time before episode one where she'd had a bad life. She is too. Besides what happens to her at Union Allied, mm -hmm. she is way too together to have had too hard of a life for too long. Okay. And that's that's why I think they're getting away with that. Where okay. she had a period in 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 high school and just after where she, um, where she was like running with the one crowd or whatever, and she was like, I like that she was not just doing drugs but dealing drugs. Mm -hmm. I like that they had that whole thing. Like mm -hmm. like hard lives are kind of a is kind of a perspective thing. Like from from the point of view of her family, like she was the worst. You know, um, I really like that scene with the cop with the with the blood in the in the eggs. Oh, I forgot about that. I thought that was great. Yeah. That was a nice little, that was a nice little thing. Um, but we can agree to disagree. I just, I, I think it all lines up really well. well, well and was and very you just went through season, season one again. I'm going off my memories of season one. Yeah. I watched it like a year ago. I was impressed with how, uh, with how much it seemed to line up. Okay. Uh, personally. Sure. My, I might be drinking the Kool-Aid. She's also one of my favorite characters. Sure. And, uh, like I said, I'm I'm less hung up on. But you think she her, gets off too easy on on uh, on whether or not she should have had a hard life and whether or not her life should be harder now. I'm not. I'm just not. I'm just not sure. Did you not have that? Not re interesting. Okay. But you're real hung up on on the on the fact that she gets your kill. But she, I, do you not think the show knows it? Why the show knows it? Well, I haven't gone back to it. I didn't think that when I watched it. So like 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 like, like I know you've come to that, but like I. It's not fresh in my memory, other than you telling me. Okay. okay um, sure. So I think you you need to. I think you need her redeemed for something that I don't know if they know, or they think she needs redeemed for. Okay, but they're treating it at the end of that season like she does. I mean, the end of first season, like, mm -hmm. like they know it then. Uh, different people. Whether they remember it now, but like they they know it then. Um, yeah, you know what though? We still talk about um, about Fisk's mother and like. That's true. She doesn't. We don't come right out and blame her for it again. But um, well, we kind of do it in, in season one. But 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 I mean, she is. We are talking about his mother and stuff. Mm -hmm. They seem to have a really good handle on 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 what exactly happened in that season and, and what it was about. I think. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yet we are maybe more concerned with the fact that she killed a man than that she inadvertently got Yurik killed. But, like, um, we are still dealing a little bit with her being manipulative, too. Mm -hmm. Was it weird that we had a new Wesley and then Bullseye's like, I'm the, treat me like the new Wesley. I'm like, no, there is a new Wesley. We have a new Wesley. Yeah. No. I was waiting for Karen to murder him, too. I get, <laughs> I get why you're saying that, but you might be missing the fact that Bullseye understands that they were friends. Mm. And he wants to be Wesley the way Wesley was. That other guy is just is is just his, his right hand henchman. Mm. He just works for him. Mm. Wesley was the guy he confided in, and you can tell that Bullseye wishes that that was Wilson Fisk. And and remember, he's trying to butter him up with the painting. Mm -hmm. That's the whole reason he does that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But can we talk about that for a second? I still haven't talked about the big question I have about Bullseye toward the end. But, okay. Um, but I'll I'll get there. Um, how did you feel about, uh, about Wilson deciding, uh, to let that lady live and let her keep the painting? I liked it. I did too, but I just can't decide, like, I just need some time to mull it over. This is one of those things that I would understand better if I was writing about it, I think. Um, where I'm like, what was it about her that he finally appreciated and sympathized with? Well, so... This is the thing I'm 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 gonna need another watch to, to to really to really process. He seems to think Vanessa's way more innocent than she is, and so he what he says exactly to that woman is Vanessa would want you to keep it. Right. He never has that shattering disillusionment though, which is kind of what when when we see her real colors, I was kind That's of waiting a for that. Great. Point. I was kind of waiting for him to be like, oh no, you're like me. You're right, and and then he had and then she should have to decide if that's a good thing or a bad thing, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's like, okay, that he's the she's the one person he loves and cares about. She seems to be the only remnant left of his humanity, really. And then if she's just like him, what does that say about him? Mm -hmm. And about the humanity he's clinging to. He never to. comes to that. He doesn't. And I feel he like, doesn't. I never and I feel like the painting thing is setting that up. He thinks she's better than she is. Because she would not want that woman to have that painting. She would have killed she, that woman yeah. and... Taking that painting. Or she would have had someone do it. Yeah. Yeah. Herm. Yeah. I didn't think of that. Yeah, I don't know. And I'm just coming to that as I'm talking. This isn't like a pre med Like, I, like that wasn't something I was thinking I was watching the show. But, but now talking about it. No, I think that's setting up something that we don't necessarily pay off. Maybe so. But again, maybe a second view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but that scene reads to me like he thinks she's more innocent than what we find out she is. No, that's, that's absolutely true. But I'm also... But yeah, I'm, I'm also just wondering um, if, like, 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 what exactly uh, is resonated with resonating with him. I, I, I guess, I guess it's not that, like you said. I guess, I guess it's it's him thinking about Vanessa, not so much anything about her specifically resonating with his past or anything, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think so. I, I, because what he says is Vanessa will want you to have it. I, I read that as he thinks she's a good person that, that, that this this woman does deserve this painting and that's what the water to have. I, that's what I took that as. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And then Bullseye goes and kills her. Off yep. screen. Yep. I don't know if I'd buy that you wouldn't clean the blood off. Like, it's still oozing. Like, it's still... Yeah. <laughs> that was weird. Like, if it was dry, that'd be different. It was, like, bleeding. And, and I think we got a couple of shots of it. Yeah. Because she sees it, and then, and, then, and then Wilson comes in, and he also sees it. I do really I do really like the blood splatter on it at the end. Mm hmm It's just a really provocative image. Mm hmm Where, like, finally we get blood on the, you know, the rabbit in the snowstorm. Yeah. Thing, where it's, like, definitively, he, that's, n that's not what he is. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm hmm No, no, it, it, was, it was great. Like... Like, like he he wasn't even to that point, but there's no doubt Wilson is not that little child anymore, right? Yeah, it's that whole thing. I wanted maybe I'm maybe I'm reading too much in, into this and asking for too much. I wanted more of a correlation between the painting and the white suit because yeah. that should be what gets into that white suit. Was that white suit a little bit shinier than you expected it to be? Yes, yes, it was. It should have almost distracting when I first saw I it. I would have liked flex on it or something like mm -hmm. it. He should be wearing that painting. Mm -hmm. That's what that ought to be. Mm -hmm. He just is suddenly wearing white, and I don't know why. But it's also not like a straight white suit. Like it's kind of shiny. It was really distracting. To but me. if it was just more beige, mm -hmm. um, 
I can't draw that conc- that 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 uh that correlation. Like I don't think that's what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't mean to like throw a thematic thing on it, but this kingpin constantly stares at white. Mm-hmm. You've got a built-in reason for him to wear that suit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I guess right. it's just the it's just the thing we always do, right? Where it's like, yeah, I want to pretend like I'm pure. Yeah, yeah, that's what it came off to me. That's kind of all it is. But what good is other shirt be purple? That's a mi- yeah, that's a minor thing. I'm not saying that it's that you it's necessarily right purple. The fact that that Daredevil already sees it is hokey as all get out. But yeah. besides that, like, I'm not gonna complain that Kingpin's wearing white, and I also don't mind the no. way they finally bring in the Kingpin name. I think that's okay too. I like that. I like that a lot. It was one of those things where I was like, I didn't realize we hadn't called him that. Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, and I didn't think of it until I did the season one rewind, and I kept calling him Kingpin. I'm like, the show never calls him that. Uh, but it it does make it, this isn't bad, but it does make it that uh, that thing we do a lot in movies where we're three seasons in, right? And we're still doing origin stuff. Yeah. We're finally just now getting up to kind of like regular comic book, you know, Daredevil stuff. Well, and the fact that Matt's running around in the black outfit feels like it, it's the parallel thing, right? Like this feels like 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 the third film. This these three seasons very much feel like a trilogy. You have your first one that blows everybody's socks off. You have the second one that's not as good. Um, and you have the third one that goes back to the first one. Yeah. So many trilogies are like And it's this. sometimes good and sometimes bad. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and the second one obviously isn't always bad either. But like Star Wars does this. We're like... like uh, Star Wars and Indiana Jones both do this. We're, we're, we're the, the first and, and third film kind of mirror. Um, yep. yep. Uh, not exactly, but like, 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 like we go back they, to the things they from the... They look in hard, but this they're doing... What I, what I really like about it is that it's not all just thematic. It's also because it's paying off a bunch of story points. But it's weird because it feels like it's supposed to be the ending. Right? But you could just say well, the ending of a trilogy of seasons and then you can keep going, I guess. Yeah, know? it feels like it should be season two, though. Right? Like, it's weird that there's a season in between we're these just, two seasons. We're just so hung up on three-act structure. Yeah. In yeah. everything. Yeah. That's kind of why, we, why we're doing that. I loved a lot of the book ending, though. I really did. No, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm saying yeah. that is part of what makes it feel like it could be an ending. I find myself wondering why he would ever go back to the to to the uh, padded suit now. Because it's safer. Well, yeah, but he doesn't even have anybody to make it for him now. Like, yeah, I wondered about that. And and I do like I do well. First of all, I love that Melvin shirt is is just is just a Scott. Awesome. You had to show me that because I didn't know what his costume looked like. Yeah, it's just that. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it spikes and he has a helmet, but, like, he's just wearing that, and I loved it. That's kind of fun. And it's, it's, it's like, canary yellow, and it still doesn't feel conspicuous. I'm glad we finally got to see the girl that he was always talking about, because I never knew what his relationship was with her. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they, they leave that ambiguous in the first season, if memory serves. Like, it could have been a sister, it could have been, I think. Like, I don't think we ever really know. I like that he... I, I like that she's, like, he's using her just the way Kingpin is. Um, I like that. Yeah. Um... I still think we could do something with him in, in, a, in a further season where he has like an alternate personality that's very violent. Um, I could be wrong, but I feel like that could be there, and that's how you could get him back to a suit. Um, that's sure. how you could reincorporate. Because because what you do, I think, is you have him kill someone, and then that represents him, and they're allies again. Is this the first of these that hasn't had Turk anywhere? I didn't see Turk anywhere. I don't think he shows up. Yeah. Yeah, I was kind of disappointed by that. I, I kept waiting for Turk. I mean, I don't know what you're doing this. Season, I, don't, I don't think we. I don't think we ever see him. Um, but I forget what we did with him last time we saw him. I don't remember if he's in Punisher either. I'm. Uh, I think he's in Punisher. I feel like I saw him in Punisher, but I could be wrong. You didn't watch that show. I watched first two episodes. Oh, you watched the first two episodes. Yeah, yeah I watched first I two episodes. I think he's in there, and I think it's early. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I think he's in the first two episodes. I could be wrong. But anyway, okay. So let me ask you the, my, my my question. Forty eight minutes, and we should talk about Matt. Well, After you should, ask your question. I know. Well, but that kind of tells you some things about the season. Um, I mean, like much like Castlevania, in some ways he is. Yeah, he's in the background a lot, but I kind of think the, what the story is about. He kind of has to be in some ways. You know, it's kind of like it's kind of like Dark Knight, where you know I watched that movie several times before I finally appreciated why I didn't feel like I got as much Bruce Wayne as I did the first movie. Like, it kind of needed to be done that way. Mm-hmm. I think that might be true of this, too, where if we went to Matt too often, um, and also I think we're I think we're mirroring season one where 
we're following Kingpin and we, in in this, and we're and we're looking at Matt as a reflection of him, and we do the opposite in in first season. I think maybe we're doing that. I'm not I'm not totally sure. Oh, I also really like that. Um, the first time Kingpin and uh, Matt interact in this is on the phone again, and I think it's and I think it's the same number of episodes. It's like four. Um, I really like that. I feel like we start Matt heavy, we end Matt heavy, and there's a middle bit where I kind of lose Matt. Like we just kind of check in with him. Yeah, and I can't decide if that's a problem or not. Like I don't think it is. I I, I think I think the issue is if we kept going back to him, it would just be stagnant, and he would start looking whiny. Yes, I I, I agree. He's re, he, he's he's being stubborn, and he's insisting on doing everything by himself, and he won't have friends. And uh, he gets with a Matt Murdock. Yeah, he Which is a very comic book thing, and I loved it. Yeah. He's like, I'm just Daredevil now. He doesn't say that, but like, that's, that's what he's doing. Yeah, and that but... happens in the comics, too. That happens. We also did it in Smallville. Yes, yes, we did. I mean, that's a thing we do a lot, season too. Three. But it works. Ending of season three, beginning of season four? No, you're thinking of a different thing. I'm talking about eight and a nine. Oh. Um, is he just the blur forever? We do the... Always? Kind of. I don't think he really even calls himself anything. The, the public does. But, um, no, that's the metaphorical death of Superman. We have we have one Doomsday fight. He doesn't actually die, but then after that is I'm I'm no longer Clark Kent, and he just runs around in a in a, a black T-shirt with a Superman S on it. That's oh. when we do the black T-shirt. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's what that is. It's a metaphorical death of Superman. That's why he's wearing black. Oh. Yeah. That's terrible. I know. <laughs> This is That's better than awful. that. Yeah, this, this is, is much a lot better, better than that. Every um, time I see anything do it, I, I always go back to that and make fun of it. I, so, with the Matt thing, yeah, this, yeah. this is this is like a lot of this season for and me. And that guy asked my question. Okay, this is like a lot of this season for me. I'm not missing it while I'm watching it. It's only when I step back and I'm like, Matt's not in this as much as... Like, I don't ever feel like I get to the end of the episode. I'm like, I'm like I didn't get enough Matt, and he's the main character of the show. But then, like, when I get a couple episodes in, I'm like... There hasn't really been a lot of that. I don't know if that's a problem. The pacing's the same way, where I'm like, I don't feel like I'm just if waiting this, for things to happen. If this had been Iron Fist, he would have just been talking and talking and saying nothing, mm. and we would have hated his mother with a burning passion. I love his mother. He, she's wonderful. She's great. And I love the flashback. I and love that we get like to see the her. sheer amount of screen time she got? Yeah. Like, I really appreciate it. Yeah. That. I no, thought it was great. I loved, I loved her flashback. I thought that was insanely powerful. Um, I, I loved it because, because one, one of the things I, I said to you after you watched the first episode was, I like that she's got, she's oh, got and some, I almost cried when the priest died. Can I just say that? That's fair. I mean, it was wonderful. I didn't, but that's fair. Yeah, but wonderful. Um, uh, I, I was, I was like, I like that she's got some fire to her cause I buy that she, that she would have been involved with a boxer. Yeah. And then we cut back to her and we see her young and she still has that. Like it, it fits. Yeah. But she's also really naive and stuff, right? Yeah. And then when she just because she lives on that part of, in that part of town, and then when she just sits there while the while the stuff's happening with the baby, I thought that was horrifying. Yeah, it was. Um, I that kind of thing always bothers me, but it made me kind of not like her. Um, not not like totally like like but where I was like, I think in a way you were supposed to. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, but like I was like, oh, I, I, I mean, I guess you have to do something to get her out of Matt's life. I was like, oh. It's not just like something she's that just happened. refusing to be his mother. Yeah. While she's there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I and thought that was. And then it's really was... easy to and it, like she's not totally to blame, but it's easy to blame her for everything after that. Mm -hmm. It's easy to be like if you, if you were just there. I mean, I really liked all that where it's like he thought he was alone, and that's why he went the way he went. That's why he's as he's as to as tortured as he is, and uh, and hardened and stuff. She was there all along. And I also like that she realizes that. Yeah. And she's like, I thought I was making, I thought I was making the 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 lesser of two evil choices, and I realized I made the wrong one. Um, I like that a she, lot. She creates him as much as his dad does, and that's a thing. And and the comics do that too to some degree. That's a thing we don't do a lot with superheroes. Mm -hmm. We're like the the death of both parents leads you to something, but like. The differences in their personalities and what they gave to him or what they didn't give to him, like mm -hmm. she is equally as important as as his dad is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like what he instilled and what she, and, and what he was missing because of the lack lack of nurture from her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I also really like the uh, something that really impressed me um, was it didn't sorry it didn't occur to me until then that he never knew her at all. 
Yeah. Like, no, I, never, I never think about that. I was... Because I always know that, like, she's a nun, but I... But I'm always fuzzy on, like, was she always a nun? Like, did she... Were they married? Did she leave later? Like, I'm not sure in the comics either. We don't always make it clear in the comics. Yeah, I'm not sure whether she was always a nun. She's clearly al always nun in this. Um, I really like how we, how we treat Faith in this. Um, yeah, I knew you wanted to talk about that. I really like... Okay, it. I said 45 minutes. Too yeah, much to talk about. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, as, as, as a person that doesn't have faith, um, I still think it's important for characters that are supposed to um, to not either A, ignore it, or B, like, always have to be snide about it. Like, I liked the... Or really touchy-feely. Yeah. No, I really liked that, like, this is just this is just someone that believes in... Like, like I like that Matt never doesn't believe. Um, his, he, like, like, he... He's getting really cynical and he's interpreting it in a really negative way. Yeah, but, he, but he, it doesn't break his faith. Because no, he never says he never says God's God's not there. He starts to interpret it differently. Like I thought I was on a mission. Maybe I wasn't. Maybe mm -hmm. God didn't didn't give give me this. I really appreciate that with characters that are supposed to have that, especially Matt Murdock, because Matt Murdock is is painfully Catholic. Um, more Catholic guilt than any but anybody. Now you said when the season started that you really appreciated how much it was about him kind of wavering in his faith but never totally losing it. Do you think that pays off okay? Because by the end, we don't really talk about it anymore. No, we just It kind of goes away that. because you were talking about it while I was already halfway through the season and I didn't have the heart to tell you. It kind of drops. It does kind of drop. Um, but I feel like we do something in the last episode. I feel like we touch back on it just a tad, but maybe I'm wrong. With... Um, with him and his mom, and do they do they go to the priest's grave or something? I can't remember. I think so. There's something where, where, they, where they touch back on it just a little bit. Um, I'm forgetting. It's not. I was with, with that setup. I was expecting the ending of, of Guardian Devil, where he was just like, "I'm gonna go do my father's work" or something like that. It's not. It's not that. They don't go that far. But I do. I do think we touch back. I. I, I just. I really appreciate it. Um, especially. I mean, I will also point to this as doing modern political commentary correctly. Um. Because they came out and they're like, we wrote this, you know, you know, uh, you know, thinking about Trump, we were really angry. Um, it never feels that way. Were it's you, inherent in the were material. Were you kind of worried that that was going to be real heavy handed? Like, I was a little obvious. worried. Um, we haven't we haven't talked at all about Foggy. Um, I think and his impossible girlfriend, who's just the perfect girlfriend for every occasion and every moment he has. Look, she used to be a jerk, but she saw the error of her ways, and now she's like a freaking saint. Yeah, yeah. No, she's no, just the exactly perfect right. girlfriend. But um. I think the write-in campaign is great. I do too. I think everything about that is is, is really good. I love the confrontations with uh, the guy who's running. I love. I, I love like how he surrenders the election. That's really good. The way the way he strong arms him at the end to talk to Nadim is really good. Mm -hmm. uh, and and he he ends up seeming like a really a really human real guy. Where, uh, you know, he's he's just at first he's just trying to further his political campaign, but he sees that it's bigger than that. Like mm -hmm. I came to like him. Oh yeah, me too. Me too. The DA. The DA, thank yeah, you. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. yeah. No, I liked him and, a lot. And I liked finally drawing the curtain back and getting more personal stuff from Foggy and going to his family's business and all of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I liked that uh, we we made it personal. Like, Kingpin's got his fingers in everything, so, like, even uh, the way they're keeping the business open isn't above board. Mm -hmm. And, like, I don't know about you, that all worked. Yeah, no, I, no, I agree. Um, I, 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 I thought all the Foggy stuff was great. Um... In comparison to the other, to some of the other Netflix shows, like especially Jessica Jones season two, this does a much better job juggling all its characters and making me feel like everything that I'm seeing is important. Yeah, and it doesn't feel like obligatory ensemble cast like you're always complaining about. Yeah, no. It was still like first season where it's all intertwined, and I never wonder why I'm. The only time I wondered why I was following somebody was when we meet the demon his family, and it's fine when it's, I finally. It's the last fifteen minutes of episode one, and I still don't know if we needed all that. If we needed all of it. Yeah. I don't think we needed all of it. If we, cut I get, then... I get it from his family later, and I, I no, do. That's fair. I that's love fair. his conversation with his wife. I love. Yeah. Um, yeah, but do we do we need it just to know the financial? Like difficulties he's having and all of that. I feel like I can get that in five minutes. Yeah. I don't need the whole birthday scene. Um, because it was just, it was tedious because I didn't know why I was watching it. Mm -hmm. It's the only thing in the season that's like that. Mm -hmm. I'm also not totally sure what the point of the lengthy flashback with Karen and Matt in that episode was either. Remember we talked about yeah. that? Yeah. Watching it. Which is watch. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure what that was about. Um, no, I really liked. Um, I loved everything with they with, with Nadim and his wife. Um, I think that actor is really good. I agree. Um, uh, what, what I, 
what I absolutely loved about that was the... Did you find yourself going, is this a character I'm going to care about? Yes. And, like, yes. very very quickly I did. Oh, man. Anyway, when that woman shoots that guy, and she's like, no, stop! Uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember what we're talking at, about. Uh, when, when, when his boss shoots the, the... Oh, my God! Right? That's nuts! It was horrifying! Yeah! And, and, it's, like... I loved the tent. That was such a wonderful tent scene because they've got the recorder and he can't say anything, and like they're using that as as a, as you know proof to get. And he's like, oh oh no, he shot her! And like, oh my god! Yep, yep. No, that no, was that was great. Crazy. That was great. Um, but no, so so there's, there's this thing that they talk about in that season that's also touched on in the Ultimate Spider-Man volume that, that we, uh, we we reviewed earlier. Yeah. Um, which is, uh, don't tell your family. They can't deal with the stress of what your of what your life is like, um, and I love that he that he does that, and then later there are repercussions for it where, where his wife is like, "You've been lying to me. Yeah, you haven't been keeping me in the loop." I really like and like the conflict that feels involved like of all that. Really typically unreasonable, or whatever. Nah, she's right. Yeah, and I kind of buy her thinking about leaving. And but I also but I also buy the idea because I'm sure cops have this, and I'm sure FBI agents have this. You can't tell your family everything you do, right? You're no, like, no, of course. Like, like, like you, don't, you don't want your wife to know how dangerous your life is. But, like, this case was a little different. It was. It was. Um, but, but, but what we also touched but on it in the Ultimate Spider-Man where, where Nick Fury's like, don't, don't tell Mary Jane about your life. He was in life. such an imp completely impossible place. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I liked it a lot. And I'm glad his line delivery when he's uh, making the message before he dies is as good as, he, as it is, because we have to hear it 65 times. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question about that. Um, so in the middle of a party, does everyone pull out their phone and start watching videos? In the middle of a wedding... I wonder about that. Um, <clears throat> no, weird. Yeah, the way... I had the same thing. It played like... All of a sudden, it's just playing on everyone's phones. Like, they didn't have to press a button or anything. Those kinds of things are always embedded in an article. And it, you would only get pinged if you were subscribed to certain news feeds that would send it to you. And again, it would be in an article. It, it played like an Amber Alert. And they were just, yeah, and they were just all, like, looking at it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wasn't sure about that. No, I had that, too. I also... I did like the explanation as to why it was admissible evidence. Yes. I'm glad they talked about that. Yes. Because I wouldn't have really understood that. And I assume that that's a real thing. Yeah, I didn't look it up. That, it sounds good. Yes, Dan, yeah. Yeah. Because cause if you're going to die, you'll know. That, the, that, that the, the idea that like it's it's less likely that you are that you would lie because you know you're going to die and you don't have enough. Like, you can you can conjure up reasons a person still would, but they'd be few and far between. So mm -hmm. it makes sense that it would be admit the last words. Yeah. Kind of... Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that, that makes complete sense to me. Um, I don't know if it's true. Exception. Yeah, that was... It seems It seems like... It, it, if it, so, it I learned like, something. Yeah. You know? But yeah, we should look that up. Yeah. We're just asking. Okay, here's, here's, here's my big question. So, this is not like a, a mystery question. It's just... I don't buy... I don't completely buy a thing Bullseye does. So... Okay. I just don't think you can ricochet things off of other things and hit things. Yeah, and just like, or, or, that, or that, that you that you could walk away and just because you were a really good sniper, if I'm remembering that right, that like without looking at a person, you could just toss them behind behind your head and then they would fall down. No, um, I don't care about that stuff. Yeah, yeah, me too. Here's um, and him. We didn't talk about this. Him in the daredevil suit is creepy. Yeah, it and is. it's great when he and, says when he says like hi Karen or whatever. Like, were you more okay with the fact that we didn't have Bullseye in a Bullseye suit because he's in the Daredevil suit the whole season? Like, I liked that. I yeah, mean, I was I, totally I, cool with it. I didn't. I didn't really have an issue with it. I mean, I want him in a in a Bullseye costume. Eventually, like, I, I don't yeah. Know it. Um, I don't know. I really enjoy. And, and just, there was something perverse was about some, it. Exactly. There's something really provocative about the Daredevil versus Daredevil thing. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of wanted Matt to have a costume by the end, and it was just full blown Daredevil versus Daredevil, like for the final showdown. But, yeah, but. They would have had to have contrived it. I don't see with the story they told how they could have gotten there. No. How no. would they build it? Yeah. I just don't know how they'd get there. Yeah. Okay, so um, here, here's my question. So uh, he's... I've been, I've been meaning to ask you this for half an hour. So uh, there, there's the big fight in the church, and he's been tasked with killing Karen, and he's going to do it at all costs. And uh, this is the thing that he knows he has to do to make uh, Kingpin like really believe in him. It's really important he does this. And when he fails and he leaves the church, 
he's desperate to find her and kill her immediately. He gets knocked down from a balcony. And Matt looks over and he's disappeared. And he's left the church. What? Yeah. What? Why did he leave? And I don't think the cops had gotten there yet. Now, if I'm remembering this wrong and there's suddenly sirens and stuff and that's why he ran off, I get it. I don't think there were. I think he had time to get back up there and try... Because they're just up there sprawled out like, we're hurt and I don't... Like, they weren't going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And at first I thought maybe he was hurt and managed to crawl away or whatever. He's walking down the street just fine. Mm -hmm. That seemed like a real typical, like, we need the plot to keep going, so the bad guy's just going to disappear for no reason. Like, I'll, I'll get you next time, and runs off. And, again, he's desperate to immediately find her and kill her. I don't know why he left. No, that's fair. I don't get it. That's fair. Somebody explain this to me. That didn't that didn't track for me at all. I mean, there's cops, and it bugged me. There's cops there, like I think very, very quickly, quickly after. So but, I'm not sure. But I don't think we'd heard them yet. I'm not sure. And so, like, what should have happened is he's he continues the fight, and then he hears that, and then he runs off. Mm -hmm. All you had to do was have him sit up and hear and hear cops, or just make it clear that that's what it was. But it looks like he disappears because Daredevil's like momentarily beaten him. Which isn't what happened. He didn't have any back injury or anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no, I agree. I didn't think about it in the moment, but that, that that's fair. Really bugged me. Because mm -hmm. that show's smarter than that. I assumed I was wrong about it, but I hopefully I am. I couldn't figure it out. Mm -hmm. That was that was the biggest thing that bugged me. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's good. It's a good season. But overall, it's really, really good. It is really, really good. Um, and there's a lot of other stuff we could have talked about. We're already past an hour. But... We talked about a lot. No, we did. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I think there's more, maybe more character stuff with Kingpin and stuff we could have touched yeah, on. But yeah. yeah. Um, no, it's excellent. Um, overall, again, I st the the end just felt a little clean to me. It to me, it felt like they needed more episodes. We weirdly were like that's so I, strange. I felt like they spent so much time setting things up that when we actually had to like knock the dominoes down, it, it, it went, went real fast. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, like we're building up Kingpin, and that was done. But at the same, I point, really wanted a more bittersweet ending where like Kingpin's still running around. It like, felt weird. But like I'm only understand. Folks, I'm only talking about like how I felt at the end, mm -hmm. not um, about necessarily how. No, because I feel like again, I feel like uh, uh, Matt earns it, and Karen, character wise, yes. And Karen kind of does. I think I just expected her to have to pay for it more, but she kind of does too. Um, I don't know what you do with that character. Before. I guess she's just she's just Lois Lane now, right? I guess so. Yeah. Well, she, no, 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 no. She's she's their she's their investigator. She's Jessica Jones now. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because um, she's gonna work with. The, but character wise, I'm not really sure. What she's you know she's got her name on the sign. She's no longer working at the. I'm guess I guess the same thing about Foggy, but. Were you worried when Foggy said he was dropping out and leaving the law firm that his girlfriend was just gonna leave him? Like she was just no, like. I a, I was really, I was like, wait, are you just like a corporate girlfriend? No, like she if, was if, already so perfect. If he leaves, is she just going to be like, okay, well, I'm, I'm only with you because you were with the company. Yeah, I'm not even totally saying that she might not have not, it, it have kind of gotten there, but she's she's a completely different character now. She's just perfect. Like, yeah. it, it was real. like, she's just, she's just, in every moment that he needs her, she is there and, like, says exactly what he needs to hear and just, just loves him so much. Matt's never going to have that. No. And it's never going to happen. No. Well, he's attracted to the wild girls. That's true. Well, she seemed like that for five seconds. And, anyway. uh, folks, thanks a lot for watching. Sure appreciate it. I'll leave your comments. Looking forward to what you thought of Daredevil Season 3. And uh, let me know what you think of uh, my reservations about the ending. And I guess it's just, it's just how I felt. I don't know. I just want to watch it again. Um, and, uh, and also, am I right about that bullseye leaving thing? Because I want to be wrong about that. And I'm just not sure about it. Uh, but anyway, uh, that and everything else we talked about. Um, you made some really great points I didn't think of. Cool. So... Good job. Nice work. Anyway, uh, we're going to move on now to some more uh, primetime crisis. And uh, I say some more. We didn't put that this under the heading, but it was a TV show. Mm -hmm. We're going to do some primetime crisis now. Uh, Eric and I watched uh, Castlevania Season 2, so we're going to talk about that on crisis. And uh, I've got a, a, another uh, couple of TV shows to talk about quickly. So anyway, uh, thanks so much for watching, and we will see you again next time. Just keep the Omnibus playlist rolling if you're watching that. In the meantime, I am Captain Logan. All right. Thanks, guys. See you later.